My name is Kenny Riggler, and I'll be your instructor for Text 290, Introduction to Instructional Technology. This will be an introduction lecture to go over the syllabus and other details about the course. My office is located in Davis Hall 106B, and if you're in Hayes or around Hayes, you're certainly welcome to stop by uh, if you're needing help. My contact information is listed there also, my office phone number, my cell number, and uh, my email. All of those are great ways to get a hold of me. Uh, it is okay to call me. Uh, actually, in some cases, I prefer a phone call. Uh, when dealing with technical issues, it's a lot easier to help you over the phone than it is in person or than through email. Uh, my mobile number is there. You are welcome to call it. I wouldn't put it in there if it wasn't appropriate. So if it need be, you can try that as well. And then my email also is a great way to get a hold of me. I'll allow you to read the course description uh, in the syllabus and as we scroll down to page two also the course objectives in short this course is about exposing you to the variety of instructional technologies that are used out there and to help you learn how to integrate those technologies so first of all we have to show you the variety of tools that are out there and then best practices for integrating those into the classroom instructional technology is an exciting area and it's becoming very heavily used and it can greatly enhance your classroom experience and so it's a it's important for future teachers to know how to use it. As the syllabus notes, there is no text required for this class. We use a tremendous amount of resources on the internet, and so there is no text needed for this course. There are equipment needed. Obviously, you need a computer, and I note here an up to date computer, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. You also need a webcam, a computer microphone, and headphones, which I'll discuss further later. So, you do need to purchase a little extra hardware, uh, but I do not require text, so I think the two balance each other out. In terms of instructional methods, basically what I do is I set up this course by weeks. So every week we'll go and we'll look at a different instructional technology out there. I'll direct you to a variety of websites, you'll listen to podcasts, uh, do a variety of activities and resources over the web, and then typically at the end of the week you will record an audio reflection instead of writing it out you actually record it I have you download a free software an audio editor and you take and record your reflection export it as an mp3 and upload it to Epsilon and I'll give you directions on how to do that later we'll use a variety of methods in this class as you can see noted in the syllabus there uh, in terms of your assignments our weekly our weeks run from Tuesday to Monday night and so every Tuesday we'll start a new week and then all assignments are due on the Monday night typically what I'll do is come in on Tuesday morning and grade your assignments and so as long as it's in Tuesday morning um, that's fine so I don't have a specific time Monday night that it's actually due just as long as it's in when I'm ready to grade it then that's fine with me for this course as you'll see in the syllabus we'll be using a course management system called Epsilon it's a new course management system that Fort Hayes is piloting. It has a lot of new features, a new look, a different way of, of delivering content than Blackboard. And so we're testing it out to see how we like it. This course is a great course to do that uh, because instructional technology is constantly changing. And it's important that you, we are able to stay on top of that. And so we will be using Epsilon for the majority part of this class. We will have online collaborative meetings in this course where using a software called Flash Meeting, we all log into the web portal using our webcams and microphones, we can communicate and have an online meeting. That's why one of the requirements is a microphone and a webcam. We'll typically do about five of them and I require that you attend at least three. Anything on, uh, if you're not able to meet them, there's some other alternate assignments that you can do to make up for those because I understand not everybody is going to be available on the time that we pick to do the meetings. And so I'll send more information on that later. In terms of hardware and software needed for this class, once again, you're going to need a good computer. I have an old seven or eight year old Dell at home that works well for browsing the internet, doing email, writing up a Word documents, but much more than that, it's very slow and problematic. And that would not be a good computer for this class. And so you need an up to date, a computer that's within a couple years old, um, that you have that ability to install programs on. So maybe your home computer is a little bit older, but if you have access to one, let's say at a school, um, that's fine as long as you can install applications. Uh, we're going to be downloading a lot of free resources off the web and having to install those. And so you're going to need administrative rights to the computer. But a good computer is a must for this technology course. And just as importantly, you also need a good internet connection speed. And so a broadband connection is going to be very helpful. 
Uh, Dial-up is going to be very problematic in this course. We're going to be downloading a lot of files that are large, It's going to, and the dial-up will just take too long and cause you a lot of problems. So even if you just have dial-up at home, as long as you have access in a public pay place or in the school, uh, that'll work. But really a good broadband connection, whether it be cable, DSL, or satellite, is going to be needed for this class. As I mentioned before, you also need a webcam and a microphone. The webcam we use for our online meetings and your microphone we use for the audio reflections. I'll just note that with your webcam, uh, all of, most of you students are in the educational program and a webcam is a requirement later on in your educational classes as we use those, uh, especially for the virtual students, as we do um, class monitoring, uh, we use that later on and so uh, you might as well get one now. Uh, with that being said, you don't have to go purchase an expensive one. Uh, computer stores, Radio Shack, even Walmart carries uh, good webcams and the low-end ones that are around twenty or thirty dollars are just fine so uh, and a lot of times the microphone will come with the the webcam and so you can purchase both of those at the same time headphones are also sometimes nice when we do our online meetings and I'll explain more about that later in terms of the procedures please pay close attention to these read through these I, these are very these are administrative things that I like you to do that are very helpful for me uh, first of all Epsilon when we get into the course management system Epsilon it has its own email system and I'd recommend uh, you email me through Epsilon you can set up your Epsilon that it automatically forwards to a personal email account and I will give you directions on how to do that so most of our communication back and forth through email will happen through Epsilon when sending me an email, please place the course number, text 290, and your name in the subject line. That way, I have a lot of students out, out there. That way, I know exactly which class and which student um, is sending me the email. This is also very important. When saving files, use the format that I've listed, and that being your last name, first name, and the assignment. So whether it's a Word document, whether it's a PowerPoint, an audio reflection MP3, I always want you to save it with this format, last name, first name, and the assignment. That allows me to organize and put things together how I'd like, and so this is how you should save your files when you do a file save as. Make sure this is how you save it and your name. Assignments will be completed and submitted via Epsilon. Uh, typically, as I said before, assignments are due on Tuesday night. Uh, if they're late, I'll usually give half credit for the first week that they're late, and after that, then I basically just give a zero. So you need to make sure that you have your assignments in on time. Under course content in the syllabus, you'll see an outline of the plan for the semester and the variety of things. I've listed the due date, and so week one, uh, then those dates are there when assignments are due for each week. Evaluation and procedures and criteria. What I've done here is just listed kind of some of the main things that we plan to do in this class. Uh, I've put a little star there that these are subject to change, uh, but this just gives you an idea of about how many points that we plan to have in the class and kind of some of the major assignments that we'll be doing and how much those are worth. Uh, so we should stick pretty close to that, but understand technology changes and sometimes that requires me to change what we do in this class as well. There's the grading scale in the syllabus. Uh, just so you note that in the technology studies department we use a higher grading scale of 94, 86, 78 and so you have to have those higher numbers to get those grades uh, it's not the typical 90, 80, 70 that you find common throughout the university system. Uh, communication disclaimer in the syllabus and basically what I'm trying to emphasize is that communication is incredibly important. I want you to communicate with me. Um, I'm a pretty good guy. I'll work with you as long as you communicate. So if you're going to be gone, that's fine. Communicate that with me, and I'll usually work. Okay, sure. You don't have to turn. You can turn your assignment in a couple weeks late. That's okay. Uh, but I, it's hard to do that after the fact. And so make sure that you communicate. Stay in contact with me, and we'll be just fine. Lastly, this is a technology course, and we do use all kinds of technology, and sometimes that can be very frustrating, sometimes it can be problematic. You just have to be patient and work your way through it. I use technology every day, and it causes me problems every day, and so it's just part of using technology. One of the great skills in terms of technology literacy is learning how to troubleshoot, and we'll do a lot of that this semester. So I'm excited for this course, and I'm excited to work with you this semester.